Hello. Uh, can you hear me properly? It's everything all right. Thank you very much. Well, uh, first of all, I would like to start uh, thanking uh, the organizers of these uh, Ingenium Days for their enthusiasm and the great work they have done to make this event uh, possible. Uh, an event which is uh, being cared for up to the slightest detail and for having uh, for, for um, making our stay here uh, an incredible experience. Thanks to the University of Pescara, uh, in which this event is taking place, uh, for making our state uh, for, for uh, their, their warm welcome uh, and for all their work. Uh, thanks, of course, to the University of Oviedo for having thought in our project to be presented uh, here. Thanks to Kay, to the Tina with one eye and Tina with uh, two eyes. <laughs> Uh, and of course, uh, thanks uh, to you all uh, who are uh, here uh, listening, uh, attending this uh, conference, both uh, in this room and uh, online. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be presenting uh, today uh, this project we have been working on for several years now uh, at the uh, Department of uh, Roman Law at the University of Oviedo. Um, I have structured it uh, into three blocks. Um, after some introducing words uh, about the background of the project and uh, about uh, the, our initial situation we, we find every year in September when we begin classes, uh, I would like to speak about uh, our COIL experience, uh, something about uh, gamification activities and uh, last, uh, if there is uh, enough time, uh, I will tell you something about uh, mock trials. But uh, first, I would like to say that um, many things are being done in Oviedo University in the field of uh, teaching innovation. Uh, every year, there are uh, some uh, projects, there are, are, there are call for uh, projects, and every year uh, an international conference is being held and there uh, projects can be presented. And it's a wonderful place to share ideas, concerns, etc. So, Let's start with the first uh, uh, with the first introductory uh, to the presentation. Uh, as for the background of the project, I must tell something about the teachers, something about the students, and uh, something about the subject. So, uh, as members of the team, we have uh, Carmen Lopez Rendo, who is the project manager. Uh, she would have uh, loved being here. I'm sure she would have enjoyed every single minute. But unfortunately, unfortunately, she had other duties to attend. Uh, Professor Emma Rodriguez Diaz and, my, and myself. And also, there are, uh, they are working with us uh, two collaborators uh, of the University of Burgos. Their names are Olga Gil Garcia and Alfonso Murillo Villar. Well, the students um, are first year students, first year, first semester. They have just arrived uh, at the university. Uh, they study either law, uh, law degree or a double degree in business administration and law degree at the University of Oviedo. Uh, they have no uh, prior legal knowledge, they don't have to, as there are no uh, subjects to introduce them uh, to the legal world during uh, pre-university stages. Um, well, uh, they, uh, they come uh, to the university and they don't really know uh, what uh, they are going to, to find, because um, unlike uh, history, maths, uh, science, uh, they haven't studied those, uh, those uh, fields yet. Uh, and what do we teach in Roman law, you may ask? Well, um, the uh, laws uh, in different countries we have nowadays uh, have had its origin in Roman law. Uh, thus, we have to provide them, the students, uh, not only with the knowledge of uh, Roman law rules or Roman legal sources, but also to provide them with the vocabulary uh, and the set of concepts they are going to need in the rest of their uh, degree or their lives, uh, we could say. Uh, um, students, what do we find uh, at the beginning of the, of the year, of the academic year? Uh, most of the students still have difficulties in reading comprehension. Uh, it's difficult, uh, it's um, difficult, but it's like that. Uh, and that makes very difficult to understand legal texts. Uh, there is a generation, speaking in general terms, uh, uh, that they are not very fond of reading. They don't like being confront confronted with a written text. 
uh, they have uh, a preference uh, with uh, electronic devices. Uh, they don't like so much traditional books, again, speaking in general terms. Uh, and um, we find also a model of, um, of education uh, in, in higher education and in law in particular, which is characterized by a passive and individual role of the, uh, of the student uh, uh, in the acquisition of knowledge. In contrast, uh, what society asks uh, for, the for the professional? Well, he must have, of course, uh, a lawyer must have, uh, or, or someone connected with law, knowledge of legal uh, sources and ability to use, uh, to use them. Uh, they must have a good uh, reading comprehension. He must ask himself uh, where the problem uh, is and uh, to find in the sources the, the appropriate solution. Um, they must uh, be collaborative, have uh, abilities in socializing, and um, they have to uh, use tools that enable virtual teamwork. We have to think that uh, today's world uh, is more and more globalized yeah, and interconnected. Uh, many firms are trying to uh, organize their work by, uh, with, with um, uh, um, many people uh, working uh, all over the world uh, the, in different places, but connected at the same time. So they must have uh, the, the knowledge, the ability to use that kind of tool. It's a good idea to uh, find, uh, to promote activities uh, so that uh, students in early stage of university get used uh, to, with, to that skills. Well, um, so let's start with the COIL experience. Uh, COIL uh, means uh, Cooperative Online International Learning uh, Experience. Uh, I've, I've copied this definition in literature uh, out COIL experience. Uh, two professors from two universities come together to design uh, certain activity uh, so that both students and teachers work collaboratively uh, to design a, um, a work plan uh, that leads them to a, uh, to a result, to a certain result. Well, uh, mm, the aim of this activity is to give students uh, an experience of internalization eh, without having uh, to leave home. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult to travel abroad. Sometimes you don't have uh, the, the resources, or you don't have the time, eh, or there is a pandemic eh, as well. So, uh, with this, the philosophy of this methodology is uh, to, to provide this kind of experience at home. Well, um, um, the um, people who the degrees in, um, in this uh, activity were uh, students from uh, the double degree in business administration and law at the University of Oviedo, and uh, the students of uh, the double degree in political science and law of the University of Burgos. Uh, we have uh, worked with these two degrees uh, the first year. We have the, also the philosophy that um, when you are introducing something new, you have to start with small groups. It was not so small at the end, okay? But uh, then you have you can uh, have the opportunity uh, to um, see whether something went wrong, something went right, uh, and then to extend to more degrees or activities. In the second year, uh, we also extended the experience to the uh, double degree uh, in business administration and law in Oviedo to the law degree, which has a, a large number of students, uh, and uh, to the double degree in business administration and law in, uh, in Burgos. So, uh, we developed this activity uh, throughout uh, several steps. The first one was to train the teachers. Uh, the teachers uh, participating in this activity took a training course in COIL methodology uh, with the University of La Salle, uh, La Salle in Mexico, uh, which has a very good program. Then we started the, um, the planning of the activity. Uh, we had uh, meetings in Teams, uh, WhatsApps, uh, mails, etc. So to design the activity, to uh, select uh, the timetable, uh, the specific aims, the tasks, to be done uh, with the students, also to select the uh, bibliography needed, uh, the paper to be handed out to the students. And finally, uh, we chose an article which is called uh, The uh, Importance of, the, uh, of, the, of Roman Law in the Training of a Lawyer. 
because this article tells them about the role of the lawyer uh, both in uh, Rome, uh, along history and in, in nowadays. Uh, it uh, tells about the requirements uh, needed for uh, lawyers to uh, be able to, uh, to, to work. Eh? And they are not so different from uh, nowadays than that in Rome, at least in the later period. Uh, it gives also information uh, about the, relevant, uh, the relevance of uh, Roman law in their training, and uh, it works as a guide uh, to the hundreds of Roman legal uh, sources. Then, uh, this was uh, the, the planning of the activity. The very first day of the, of, uh, of the course, eh, the activity was explained to the students. We also opened on the registration form eh, uh, because, so that students could uh, register. It was a voluntary activity. It was not compulsory. So uh, we explained everything uh, and they fulfilled the, the form. We have uh, our first surprise there. Uh, in Oviedo, uh, there were out of uh, 154 students 119 volunteered for the activity. Eh, so we have to make uh, some adjustments. Uh, we have designed it uh, to be uh, worked out in pairs, but uh, we have to change into groups of three or four, or four people. So uh, three, day, three days afterwards, uh, the um, register uh, closed uh, and we started building the teams. Uh, we formed 38 building, uh, mixed teams Three students from Oviedo. It's, it has a larger number of uh, number of students, and uh, just one from uh, from Burgos. But we have we, we tried to mix the groups: uh, uh, Burgos, Oviedo, uh, morning groups with afternoon groups, so that to make it uh, as heterogeneous uh, as possible. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, we tried that they all had something in common. Uh, could be uh, the language they spoke, they spoke uh, the their hobbies. Uh, uh, everything. So, um, according to the uh, preferences they have shown in the in the registration form. So, um, okay. Uh, the next step was we called it uh, ice breaking. Uh, because uh, they had to each uh, each group had to, um, to to have a virtual meeting uh, to break the ice to present themselves uh, to tell about their hobbies their concerns uh, etc uh, after the meeting they have to upload an evidence uh, it had taken place uh, just a screenshot or a picture uh, to the virtual campus then came the, 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 phase, the, the phase of individual work. Uh, they had to read the article, the paper, and to thoroughly to understand it and to prepare three questions. Uh, one for each uh, member of the group. Uh, they sent the questions by, via email uh, and the other uh, students had to answer with information of the, of the article. So at the end, they had an, like an, a script. Uh, with that script, they recorded, that was the following phase, they recorded an interview. Eh? And it was, they, they have made very nice uh, work eh? and they uploaded it into the campus. Uh, the last steps were the evaluation of the activity throughout an, uh, a Google Forms um, and uh, the delivery of certificates. Uh, here uh, we made something special. Here are the uh, photos taken in class uh, and the, uh, the certificate uh, of participation we provided. Well, I, I'm going to, com uh, to comment briefly something about the results of the survey. Uh, all of them said uh, uh, the participation uh, was, uh, was satisfactory. Uh, the marks were uh, like uh, between a four and a five. Uh, the, the media was in between a four and a five in a Likert scale. Uh, they all, uh, I'm not going to bore you with a percentage, uh, with a particular percentage, just uh, going to say that uh, they were all, uh, most of, quite happy with the method uh, uh, of the recording of the video, uh, of the question and answer um, uh, method uh, we, we applied. Um, uh, they were um, very happy with the uh, article chose uh, with, uh, to introduce them to the world of law. That was the, the fifth uh, picture. 
and they valued in particular the opportunity to introduce themselves uh, to other students of other uh, of the same classroom of other classrooms uh, or other degrees or universities during their very first days at university and uh, to end uh, uh, they valued uh, that as uh, it was uh, their first uh, practice at the university, uh, it had helped them very much to um, uh, to get in touch with the academic, with the university world. And it was really helpful. Well, then uh, we come to the second uh, block of this presentation the gamification activities. And here is uh, uh, some uh, crosswords we have uh, prepared for them in the virtual campus. But I'm going uh, to speak a bit about uh, another tools, another apps we have, uh, we have used. Uh, uh, I guess many, many of you know Kahoot. Yes, eh? and Socrative, not so much. Well, OK. Uh, and so I'll go, uh, you know how it works. Well, you may have the temptation to think that gamification in education is something relatively new, but it's not true. Eh? If we go back uh, to Quintilian, eh, back in the first, sorry, back in the first century AD, uh, he was very fond uh, of, of this game as a means of learning. Uh, he suggested children should be provided with ivory pieces uh, with the shapes of the letters. So by playing with them, it would be easier later on to be able to read. And it was uh, 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 going to help. It. So, well, uh, most of you know Kahoot. We have employed it. Uh, to as an element of uh, active uh, participating as the dynamization of uh, theoretical uh, classes. Eh? You know uh, how it works. So at the end of the session, uh, uh, we, we make a we, we play uh, one of these cahoots, uh, and uh, it's really helpful because uh, students pay more attention as they know they are going to be asked about the contents. Of the, of, of the class, eh? they pay more attention. Uh, it's also uh, a way of uh, putting uh, some, an, a smile on everybody's faces at the end of the class. Its faces are very important in the education, and you can see how it changes when you say, uh, it's time for our Kahoot today. Eh? It's wonderful. Eh, when they see, uh, when the winners uh, see their names on the podium, some of them, they take photographs. Uh, so it's very good. Sometimes I do it uh, at the middle of the class when I see they are uh, a bit uh, tired, uh, so they can have a rest by, by changing the activity. Uh, with the pay um, application, you can also play Kahoot in teams. Uh, we have uh, one photograph there. Uh, it's also helpful to memorize because a memory it has a, a strong visual component. So you remember things better when you can associate a, a concept with a, an image. A, a, we have taken special care with the, with the drawing. Why do we have that uh, telephone uh, there, that old telephone? We were trying to introduce the term delación. That is the call, the inheritance call. Eh? When someone dies, eh, eh, we say eh, the hairs are called eh, to that inheritance. The call. So you can associate with that uh, telephone, eh, a telephone call. Well, uh, we have used uh, Socrative. I don't know if so many of you know that. that it's uh, a bit like Kahoot. The main difference is that whereas in Kahoot, uh, the questions, uh, you can see them in the screen. Uh, in, 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 uh, with Socrative, students in their own devices can see both the wording, the questions, yeah? so and they can uh, they have a, a space there uh, to choose the uh, multiple choice question or the true or false, or even to type to to write the appropriate the short uh, answer question. Well. Uh, you remember I've, I've started by saying that students, uh, when they start their, um, their law degree, uh, some of them have difficulties in reading comprehension uh, and they don't like reading. They don't like uh, finding the, the, being confronted with a legal text. And that's terrible uh, because uh, surgeons have their scalpels, uh, mathematicians have their numbers and so on. 
but we we have our legal sources we they are our tools eh? so there is no other way eh, than to get used to them so uh, we prepare a case and uh, we uh, wrote the the answer contained in the legal source uh, for instance in this, in this one we can see uh, a text uh, from the justinian code eh? they have to read it to understand it so that they ha they can uh, find the correct answer. Uh, you mm, put things in a friendlier way, eh, with the picture and everything. So little by little, they are getting used uh, to the uh, to being confronted with legal test. Eh, when they see, they they understand and they find uh, the the feedback uh, provided uh, tells them they have uh, done it all right. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, we have uh, prepared uh, the cases, we have corrected it, and after the class uh, we have uh, played a Socrative so to reinforce uh, the, the practice already corrected, uh, so that they can remember everything possible. Uh, Socrative can be played individually uh, or can be played in teams. Uh, um, there is a, a tool, the Space Race, uh, where they play in teams and uh, uh, the winner is, of course, the team uh, which gets uh, the biggest number of correct answers uh, quicker. We have also used this tool uh, to uh, kind of a review before the exams. Uh, we have uh, made our own version of the past the word game. Uh, we have um, typed down definitions uh, with a, with, with, which who begin with a certain letter or of the alphabet, uh, and they have to uh, to write down the the answer. It's useful before the exams. So uh, we come to the last part of my presentation, which is uh, the mock trials. Uh, everything. Um, in the end was aimed at this particular activity to uh, give students the particular skills uh, they were going to need to participate in these mock trials, mock trials. the ability to work in teams, ability uh, of legal comprehension, uh, of uh, understanding of texts, uh, and uh, ability uh, also to use digital tools because you'll see uh, we have both uh, we we used uh, both um, uh, we have uh, we've made uh, these mock trials uh, in presence in in the uh, uh, in the law faculty. But also, when the pandemic came, we had to use a, a Teams, a conference via Teams, to be able to do so. So, in the first place, we designed the case. We tried to make it rather long, eh, with many problems, many people eh, implied, so that we could give everyone a role. Eh, either uh, the lawyer of a certain uh, subject, or the uh, witness, uh, or judge, eh, or expert, eh, everything. So, that uh, we uploaded it into the virtual campuses. Uh, we also uploaded the, in the assign assignment of roles, uh, the instructions of the activity, of course, and even uh, we uh, provided some links to recent news uh, in which a certain problem was um, was uh, taking place uh, nowadays. Uh, the case was uh, uh, situated in Roman law, but uh, sometimes you find problems uh, that are exactly the same. They have uh, to face the same uh, legal legal problem. Uh, in this case, uh, there were some uh, problems about uh, liability under uh, sports. Uh, during uh, javelin throws. Well, uh, there are different procedures in Roman law. Uh, I'm on, only going to speak about the cognitio extraordinary procedure, uh, which is the one uh, which is more like uh, our day procedures, because it has a big uh, written part and uh, the oral phase uh, comes on in the end. Eh? Uh, students must uh, must write their claims. Eh? Um, 
magistrate, uh, the, the student playing the role as magistrate uh, has to deny or accept uh, that claim. Uh, then uh, the other student who is uh, um, going to def defend uh, has to give his arguments as well, uh, and then uh, the, the comes the oral phase. So, uh, in the first year, students sent their, uh, their documents via email, but there were too many emails, that was not practical. So, in the second year, uh, we built out a virtual workspace uh, in Teams. Uh, there was a digital dossier which folders and subfolders where students could uh, upload, upload uh, their uh, documents, uh, the plaintiff. Uh, and then uh, he gave a notice in the chat uh, uh, telling everybody uh, he has already done so, uh, so that the others could uh, in turn vote uh, their appropriate document. Uh, after uh, the defendants, uh, the, um, everyone uh, had uh, prepared their documents, they were all summoned uh, to the um, to the oral phase of the of the trial. Well, uh, the year of the pandemic, uh, we couldn't uh, go to the um, trial uh, at the law faculty, uh, but uh, Plan B, uh, we uh, provided a virtual uh, conference. Uh, and it was very, very nice. They were rather happy. They were uh, at home uh, with um, nothing to do. And uh, this year they prepared, they, were, they got uh, involved uh, very well in the activity. But I strongly recommend whenever it's possible to do it in, uh, the, in the law faculty, eh? because there, uh, well, they can feel more like um, lawyers. Uh, even uh, the judges uh, wear their togas, their robes, eh? and it's, of course, much better. Uh, here you can see, uh, December 2021, you can still see uh, some students wearing their mask. Eh? There were uh, still some, some problems with the um, with the pandemic, of course. Well, and my conclusions. Eh? Well, uh, I, I've spoken about three different uh, blocks of activities. Uh, about the COIL mo uh, model, it gives the opportunity to build uh, personal relationships eh? uh, with people mm, who are out of their environment, eh? who are not in the same class, uh, in the same university. Uh, it contributes uh, to develop their digital skills. They also know, uh, get to know that um, electronic media uh, and electronic devices can not only be used for um, Twitter or Instagram or whatever, but they can uh, be used for learning, and that's also interesting. They get experience in working in virtual teams, and they get uh, also uh, an, an experience that can be included in their curricula. Uh, so uh, that's why we gave them a, a certificate of atten attendance. Uh, as for the gamification, the, uh, it contributes to the development of uh, soft skills, such as uh, uh, team working. Eh? Uh, gamification can benefit both from the um, competition when healthy, it's uh, something very good, uh, and also from teamwork, but then you have to compete with other teams. Uh, it promotes the active participation of the students and it has and it's proved uh, very positive into the introduction and the guide to the handling of, of Roman law. Uh, as for the mock trials, uh, it has improved both written and oral communication skills, and it has encouraged very much their creative thinking. Uh, this we, uh, we have especially seen in the oral phase of the, um, of the trials, because students had to uh, prepare their evidence. Uh, they have uh, to prepare, for instance, the reports. Uh, and uh, their cre creativity was incredible. For instance, uh, one of the problems was uh, one, uh, a sale of horses in which one of the horses was sick. Well, one student 
look up for horses disease, diseases in horses and try to find out a certain illness, a babeosis, a quina aguda, I don't know very well the name, either in Spanish or in English or whatever, uh, which uh, apparently the animal can be uh, without symptoms for a certain period of time, so that uh, the, uh, the amounts of money to pay from the seller would be uh, short and uh, short. Well, uh, it was also very good to improve uh, reading uh, their, their oral communication skills. I have got here an example of what one of the students wrote, uh, a first year student who have only spent like four months uh, at university. Uh, he had uh, managed to mimic uh, the language uh, used in the last period of Roman law, uh, which is, well, uh, someone ran there, uh, you could see. Please serve this notice for the prompt notification of the defendant and prepare your pleadings as soon as possible. The parties will be summoned to trial before the magistrate judge, where justice will be done in the good name of our imperator Justinianus, by the greatness of Constantinopolis and the grace of God our Lord. Uh, to me, that was uh, well important. Uh, they also go. Uh, uh, they also uh, went sometimes beyond what uh, it was expected. For instance, uh, they have um, looked information of about the currency uh, in the sixth century after uh, Christ uh, in the currency in use, so that they could in their uh, in their claims and so they could use the appropriate uh, coin coinage. Uh, okay, and um, to me it was uh, very important the way they got used uh, to the to the legal sources. For instance, another problem uh, it was the liability of the uh, of someone uh, from whose house uh, had something had fell to the street and has uh, hurt uh, something. Uh, that that person has a really difficult defense uh, because uh, here liability is quasi objective. Okay. Uh, they managed, they looked into the sources everywhere and found that uh, between uh, certain uh, certain lawyers back in Roman age, uh, someone said that this uh, rule did not apply when uh, it was at night. So they started asking the witnesses and so on. Uh, well, it wasn't dark, it was uh, night. So you, uh, you got much more work there in the, in the uh, research than if you have asked them to write an essay, for instance. And uh, finally, all of these methodologies, uh, we found out that uh, favored the motivation towards the subject, and uh, they were um, happier uh, with it. So I've come to the end of my presentation. I, I, I hope I get it in, in time. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, suggestions, please feel free to, to ask. Joseph and Cahoot. In your university, are they paid or free licenses that you use for th those purposes? Okay, uh, with uh, Socrative, we don't need uh, uh, a special license, yeah, it's free. And for Kahoot, uh, we um, used also the free version uh, until uh, this year, the last year, uh, like at the end of October, uh, it has limited the, um, the amount of students uh, for just uh, up to 20, I think. That's too little uh, for a, a law degree. Uh, uh, and in our department, uh, paid for it, paid for the, for the version. But it was difficult, uh, it was hard. Eh? It was hard to find. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the reason I ask is that a lot of educators would try to use Kahoot or Socrative or uh, Mintimeter or, or things mm -hmm. like that, but a lot of the times they're just fiddling around with free licenses and it doesn't, you know, they, they reach the same limitations as yourself, that there's mm -hmm. a limited number of students or a limited number of questions you can ask. So I was just wondering from your own university's perspective, mm -hmm. which direction you had gone in. So that was interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. Of course, uh, when there, when cert, uh, certain app uh, ends, uh, ends uh, the free experience, so to say, uh, another app appears. But when you get used to one, it's hard to change, of course. Hi, thank you. I actually have two questions. So the first question was, you mentioned when you put the students together in groups, mm -hmm. you deliberately put them together with shared hobbies, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering why. And then the second question is with the mock trials, I'm not too sure if I heard correctly, was that extracurricular 
or did you actually assess it? Uh, okay. okay, thank you. Uh, well, um, um, the only explanation as we mix the groups uh, with according to their hobbies or whatever uh, is um, to provide they had something something in common to speak about uh, to, to get uh, to, uh, to break the ice. Uh, they, they gave us the, the consent. Uh, we, we didn't uh, pass that information to the others. Uh, it was uh, that, uh, and anyway we had their, their consent. Uh, that's the, the explanation. And the second question was uh, if it's an extracurricular, it's a uh, an, um, voluntary activity uh, we uh, we prepare in in the in, in the subject. It's it's not another another subject, so to say. Yeah. Uh, of, the, of, the, of the activities I've explained, well, I think I've uh, enjoyed every of them yeah, in a certain way because they have different aims. And the and the common aim is to um, to look for the motivation of the of the students. So uh, I have a wonderful time with Kahoot, for instance, because I see faces in education are important, and you can see the the, the change of their faces. But also the, the mock trial uh, can be uh, a great experience uh, because you you see uh, uh, the improvement they they've made along the term. So it's uh, quite comforting. And my last question, did you notice the um, element of competition uh, happening, you know, in competition? So the students with the mock trials, that they really wanted to win or how they judged the trial or with the games and if that element of competition was good for the students learning? OK, um, well, uh, I promote healthy competition uh, so that they can get the, be the best of themselves, but not uh, to hate the, the, the other team, of course. Uh, um, with the Kahoot, you can see that they they want to to win. Uh, okay. Uh, with the mock trial, mm, normally they mm, they are uh, they take things uh, quite uh, with quiet. Uh, but some students get get angry. No, no, I I, I, I was right. I, I want to, uh, they they want to speak more and more and. and so on they are it's it's un difficult but uh, the normal the average uh, takes things uh, uh, with a good sense of competition um would you find that the students so it was first year students you were working with yeah, yes yeah. always first year so students. so when they came from second level so if their prior experience is that that technology is something they'd have experienced in in second level uh, well um, kahoot for instance uh, many of them know kahoot uh, not so many uh, know uh, Socrative, and uh, well, they are good with technologies, but not uh, as good as one uh, uh, one of my age would have expected. Uh, sometimes uh, they they use technologies, as, as I've said, uh, Twitter and Instagram and so on, but they they are not so uh, used uh, to um, to technologies for their own learning. Uh, for instance, uh, it strikes me that when they don't uh, know a certain word, they are not used to, it's very easy, Google it. But uh, they Google everything, but not something they have to, uh, to study, uh, to understand. Uh, thank you. My name is Peter from Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, I got curious about the group activity, and you mentioned that you had them start with Icebreaker. Mm -hmm. uh, and I find icebreaker quite a uh, good activity for the future mm -hmm. group work. Uh, so I'm always looking to put more icebreaking mm -hmm. uh, uh, versions mm -hmm. to my toolbox. Mm -hmm. So could you could you develop on that? How do how do you do it, and the, what different types of icebreakers do to do? Uh, yes. Uh, the icebreaker, uh, I think it's not a very good idea. They um, begin an activity, they, they have to accomplish a certain task uh, without knowing them. Eh? So uh, the first step was uh, to promote a virtual meeting eh, by WhatsApp or video conference or the means they liked uh, so that they could start speaking a bit about themselves. Yeah, uh, and present themselves and share concerns, uh, share, I don't know, uh, perspectives or uh, professional preference if they have any at this early stage of, the, of their studies. 
Uh, and then once they have uh, presented themselves, uh, they have to upload a certain evidence. Uh, so that was it. It was uh, very simple because we have um, designed this activity to be done in the first uh, days of the course, in the first um, couple of weeks, uh, because um, it takes time uh, to uh, meet, it takes time to record a video, to this, the script, and once they have exams and everything, uh, it's not a very good idea, I think, uh, to, uh, to have this kind of activities that take more time, uh, so they can uh, have more time to speak freely and, and so on. Well, brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing your presentation today. Thank you very much.